concerns about a potential global slowdown. So I want to get a little bit more on what's driving these markets now with Olivia. Thanks, Miriam. Well, I wanted to get started in on the bond markets because this is really where we've seen the most movement ahead of tomorrow's ECB meeting. Yesterday, Mario Draghi's comments that the central bank is prepared to buy up short-term debt. Well, that sent yields on Spanish and Italian notes sharply lower. This morning, we're getting a little bit of a correction. Those Spanish two-year notes climbing just three basis points. Meanwhile, an Italian two-year debt up just about eight basis points. But we're also, just as a reminder, how different a story it is in the core of Europe. Look at that. German two-year notes still in a negative yield environment. Investors effectively paying for the privilege to lend to Germany. But we're also going to be watching what happens to 10-year debt today because Germany has an auction of 10-year bunds later on. And actually, one strategist over at UBS had a note out this morning saying he thinks now is the time to buy bunds because he thinks the market has have over, have priced in more aggressive action than we are actually going to get out of the ECB tomorrow morning. In terms of equity markets, it's a pretty mixed picture. Well, it looks like more losses than gains across the board here in London. The FTSE 100, it's off about 610. It is the miners and the oil and gas companies leading markets lower. One company dragging down its sector is BP, the oil giant HP Billiton. This is the world's largest mining company, down nearly 2%. This is on the back of that disappointing Australian GDP report. We've also heard from their CEO saying he does expect iron prices to rebound from a three-year low. And finally, Richemont, the luxury giant, the maker of Cartier watches and Mont Blanc pens, those shares up about seven-tenths of 1% on the back of very strong sales. Miriam. All right, Livia, thanks very much. In terms of the, those weaker countries, it is the sort of efficiency and the flexibility of the labor market. That is absolutely critical. And so how does Europe as a whole compare to, say, uh, the U.S. and emerging markets on that? Reforms governments are taking on to improve mm -hmm. the flexibility of their labor market, to improve productivity. Yeah. If you have an unstable environment, demand isn't there for goods, services, and products. Well, exactly. what, else, what can they do? Expect to see, say, in the next five years. Let's start with the U.S. in the aftermath of this uh, presidential election, nine weeks to go now. Mm -hmm. Are we going to see some severe spending cuts and tax rises? Mm -hmm. You mentioned pensions there. Do people have to expect to be working for a lot longer? Part of uh, business leaders in the politicians. And of course, we always hear about large, healthy companies with a great deal of cash on their balance sheets, strong yeah. cash flow. What needs to happen to get these companies to start? spending, investing yeah. and hiring. Is this a part of the problem when it comes to competitive? A bit more on what's driving these markets and you're focusing on Spanish bonds. Yep, Mariam, I wanted to start in on the bond market because that's really where we've seen the most movement ahead of that ECB meeting tomorrow. Yesterday, Mario Draghi's comments sent short-term debt for both Spain and Italy sharply lower. As he said, the central bank is prepared to buy up to three-year maturity. So right now you're looking at Spanish two-year bonds. You see there's a little bit of a correction after yesterday's sharp fall up just a few basis points to 3.13 percent. Similar move in Italy. Well, actually now the correction is stronger. We're seeing notes on Italian two-year debt. Those yields up 21 basis points. And just as a reminder, what a different story it is for Germany if we look at their two-year notes still in a negative yield environment. Investors paying for the privilege to lend to Germany. I also just want to take a quick check in on the 10-year note. Germany is having a sale of 10-year bonds in about an hour's time. And ahead of that, UBS is actually saying this morning they think now is the time to buy bonds because they think markets have priced in more aggressive ECB action than we are likely to get tomorrow. So saying that that move lower on Italian and Spanish two-year notes that we saw yesterday was actually perhaps too strong. Here you're looking at the equity markets. It's a down day across it's the miners and the oil and gas companies leading markets lower. And a few specific stocks we are watching for you. Finally, some of the biggest movers, charges of gross negligence against the oil giant after the Gulf of Mexico spill. We're also watching shares in Britvik. This is the best performing stock in Europe this morning. It's the maker of Robinson's fruit drinks. It's rising this morning on news that is potentially in talks about a deal with AG Bar. That's the maker of drinks like Orangina. And finally, Richemont, the luxury giant, rising particularly in Europe. Miriam. All right, Olivia. Well, it's the black gold that's driven Moscow's rise to wealth. Russian oil fields are more productive than those in Saudi Arabia, but the oil is often found in harsh, difficult d environments. And on the latest leg of his journey on the Translate... At this uh, point, uh, you know, there is the, a kind of coordinated action uh, amongst the policymakers to try to rebalance the kind of 
you know, dysfunctional markets as Mario Draghi is describing. Uh, he also made the point that for some countries, uh, interest rates are too low because the difference and spreads are at the moment still very wide and uh, they don't price in the European Parliament. Uh, on the other side, I think uh, the market can be disappointed because of the, the lack of uh, clarity in the timing of the, um, of the action. Uh, I really don't think Draghi is going to give a clear date uh, in terms of uh, you know, when the ECB is going to move because yeah. they don't want to have... Uh, that means that you know, Germany shouldn't be at the current levels, uh, Austria shouldn't be at the current levels uh, because you know, the risk of you know, a recession is uh, there also in the core countries. At the same time, you have uh, other countries like Italy or Spain or uh, Portugal, as we said before, where, you know, there is no risk of a five-year recession. But, uh, you know, structural reforms uh, uh, are working their way to support potential growth. And uh, we can see, like, in 2013 already, like, some progress. That there is uh, still that risk premium yeah. very much there. Well, Annalisa Piazza, fixed income analyst at New Edge Group, thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Coming up for you, we're going.